Hi, and welcome to episode 27 of Understanding Darktable. As promised, this week we're going to get into the retouch module. This absolutely blows spot removal out of the water. It is fantastic. Got a few little bits and pieces to address, but we'll do that at the end. Right now, let's dive on in. Okay, so the retouch module works on the concept of scales, and scales are represented by these grey boxes here. When we first open up the retouch module, we'll see it pretty much looking the way it is now. We've got these two white triangles above and below the left-hand rectangle. Uh, that rectangle has a little red rectangle in it. Apologies if you can hear the thunder outside. We've had a storm ripping through here in the last half hour. I've been sitting here waiting for it to go away. Uh, then we've got this white rectangle which represents the blur layer of the image that we're looking at. And we can select any scale simply by left clicking and that moves that red rectangle. So the red rectangle is, is whichever layer you are currently working on. How many scales we edit is entirely up to us. And I know you don't yet have a concept of what the scales are. We'll get to that in a sec. But you can work on three scales. You could work on 10 scales. You could work on 15 scales all the way out to the end. And you do that simply by grabbing that little triangle at the bottom and dragging it to reveal as many scales as you want. Let's just read through these tooltips. The top slider adjusts where the merge scales start. And merge scales is something we're not going to be able to wrap our heads around for probably another 10 minutes, so just bear with me on that one. The bottom slider adjusts the number of scales, as you've just seen. The red box indicates the current scale, as I've already said. And the green line, which you haven't yet seen, indicates that the scale has shapes on it. Okay, so if we decide, okay, we're going to work on half a dozen scales. And yes, I will get to explaining what scales are shortly. We then have the option to work with these tools in the retouch tools section. And what we've got is a brush, a circle, an ellipse, and a path, and then the edit existing shapes button. Okay. How do we start on this? Essentially what scales do is break our image down into different levels of detail. Fine details, less fine details, coarse details, even more coarse details. And how many layers it breaks it down into all comes down to you, the user, and how many scales you decide to work on. So if you choose just going to have three scales, it means you're just going for fine details, medium details, and coarse details, and that's it. If you decide to work on, say, five, then you've got very fine details, fine details, medium details, coarse details, very coarse details. And we'll get to have a look at these in just a sec. But before we dive into the scales idea, we really need to wrap our heads around how editing with these shapes works. Because although I'm 27 videos into this series, I had not yet got around to doing a video on the spot removal module. It was on my list of things to do, but when 2.6 dropped at the end of last year, it was a case of, wow, not much point in doing a spot removal video now. Anyway, so what we've got first up is a brush. Now, when we click on the brush tool, we will get this white circle, which is our brush tip. And you'll see that just to the right of my mouse, there's a little white plus sign. That is where we are going to clone from and our brush tip is where we're going to clone to. And we can separate them in a multitude of ways. We can hold down the shift key and that will allow us to click and set a point from which the source material will be taken from. 
So where that little plus symbol is now, that's where we're going to clone from. And wherever we move our brush to, that's where we're going to copy pixels to. So if I release my shift key and I now left click and drag, we can see that as I paint a path, the little plus symbol tracks alongside. If I go left, it goes left. If I go right, it goes right. And when I release my mouse button, we've got this connecting line which connects the two starting points. That just shows us where we've created a path that has a source over here and a destination over here. Uh, I'm not going to go into describing the feathering because hopefully you're across that by now and if you're not you've been jumping ahead and haven't watched all of the videos so you need to go back and do your homework. Okay. Alright, cool. If I want to get rid of this path I can simply right click on it and it's gone. If I want to change the size of the brush I can use my mouse wheel, all this stuff you should already know I probably don't need to cover this again. If I want to draw multiple paths in one session, what I can do is come over to the brush tool, hold down my control key, and then click on add brush. Now, I can draw as many paths as I like, and they've all been added to the image, even though we can't see them right now, and it's because we are still in the path painting mode. And there's a couple of ways I can get out of it. I can come over here and click on the Add Brush icon again, or I can simply right-click on my image. If I right-click, I can now see those four different paths that I drew with both their source and their destination. So I'm going to delete those. This will come in handy later on when we get into skin retouching. We've then got circles. As you would imagine, you can use your mouse wheel to change the size of the circle. You can use your shift key to change the size of the feather. And with the circle and the ellipse, we can do a left click and drag so that we are determining our destination point first by where we click, and then we drag to the point we want to clone from. In other words, we're setting destination and then we're setting the source. So if I wanted to fix this tree here, I could left click there and then drag to the point I want to clone from, maybe over here so I don't want a tree, and it's got rid of my tree. A very crude interpretation. We'll get into a little bit more finessing in a moment. Right click to get rid of that and my tree comes back. Okay, ellipse and path you should already be familiar with and the edit path tool you should also already be familiar with. Below that we've got algorithms and this white one with the red cross on it activates the healing tool. This is what makes the retouch module such a massive leap forward from the spot removal module because the spot removal module simply did a crude copy and paste you said i've got a bit of dirt on my sensor here so i'm going to click there that's my destination and the spot removal module would go okay great i'll copy this little portion of pixel data from somewhere close by straight over that and it didn't really blend and it was quite common to you know particularly when you're trying to patch up the sky to end up with these splotches of color that just didn't really match with the area around them this healing algorithm does a much smarter job of it so if i was to zoom in here near these trees we can see that i've got some sensor dust uh, in my camera so what we could do is select a circle. Obviously doesn't need to be that big, so I'll shrink it down and I might just shrink the feather as well. And then I'll come over to here. And again, that could be even smaller. And I'm just gonna left click and I'm gonna drag out to the side and release. And beautiful job much better than the spot removal module. Okay, if I wanted to do another one, I could grab my circle again, left click, 
drag out, release, and there we go. Two bits of the noise gone beautifully. Down here, we've got a little wormy shaped <laughs> piece of dirt. So for that one, I might do a path around it, something like that. And Darktable put the source over here. I'm just gonna bring it a little closer to the destination just so that the pixels are a closer match. And voila, beautiful job. Now, that's all well and good, but what we're doing at the moment is we are editing on our original image. We are not making use of scales yet. So we are working on all of the pixel data that exists in the image in one go. And in an instance like that, just patching up dirt on a clear blue sky, that's acceptable. It does the job, and as you've just seen, it's a much better job than the spot removal module does. So, let's try all of this again. Let's reset the tool, and let's zoom back in there, and let's try and get our head around what these scales are doing. I'm just gonna set this to six scales. As you can see, because our red rectangle is on that leftmost box, we are still looking at our original image. Now, we can click on any one of these scale boxes, but nothing changes in the image. If we want to see what level of detail this scale represents, then we can click this icon here, Display Wavelet Scale. Now, I would imagine that some people are going to be happy to work with the original image displayed all of the time and some people are going to prefer to activate this display wavelet scale mode all of the time. I'm in the latter camp. I like to have the wavelet scale displayed. So we click on that and what we've got is a visual representation of, given that we're on the fourth of six wavelet scales here, something around about the median of the detail in this image. Now it's very dark at the moment, and as soon as we activate that button, that display wavelet scale, you will see that preview single scale appears here. And this is essentially like a levels control. And you can drag these three triangles manually, but really, this little icon to the right, Auto Levels, does a beautiful job. Simply click that, and now we can see the medium level of detail within this image. And as we move to boxes to the left, we get finer and finer levels of detail within our image. Now, if you click on one of these boxes and you don't see any preview, it's because you're not zoomed in far enough. If I was to zoom in with my mouse and keep going, eventually I will get the very fine detail displayed in my <laughs> main view here. And if we go to the right hand side, then we get more coarse and more coarse the further we go until we get to the white box where we are simply looking at the blur layer that's being applied to the whole image. How the blur layer works, I really haven't got my head around just yet. But basically we are gonna work on all of these gray boxes. Now where this scales idea really comes into play is with skin retouching, and we'll get to that in a minute. But for now, Let's just zoom back in here to where our trees are, and we know we've got some noise up here. Now, if I go to a finer level, I can still see those couple of dots just. If I go to the next finest level, they're getting a little bit hard to see. So I'm gonna come back up to this layer, and I'm just gonna choose a round circle tool and I'm just gonna mouse over that, and I'm gonna left click, and I'm gonna drag like so. And then I'm gonna grab that again, 
and I'm gonna left click, and I'm gonna drag, and I'm gonna do that. Now, remember that tool tip that said the green line indicates that the scale has shapes on it? You can now see that this rectangle, I'll just move off it, has a green line across the top of it. So that layer has a shape or multiple shapes on it. So we've now come up to the next layer and those dots are much more visible now. Now remember that keyboard shortcut, control and click the shape and that will allow me to draw multiple paths in one go. So I can just do that, do that, and now both of those splotches have gone. I can go up to the next level. Look, there they are again. Click, drag, click, drag. Now I can see that squiggly bit of dirt as well. So I'm gonna grab the brush tool and it doesn't need to be that fat. So we're just gonna trim that down and we'll do a path over that like so. And then I might just grab the source and bring it in a little bit closer like so, just a left click and drag. And now we'll move up to our most coarse layer of details. And there they are again. And I'll control click the circle, do that, do that. Grab the path again, do that. Just bring that in. And now we can go back to our original layer and that has done an absolutely beautiful job of cleaning up that sky. This has much greater potential. So let's choose another image. All right, so I found this photo of this ugly guy here and this was shot by my mate Doug Coleman here on the central coast of New South Wales. Doug's a great photographer and he did this portrait for me. And what we've got here is some fairly heavy skin blemishes. And this is where the retouch module really shines. So let's suppose we were to come right in here and I'm you know, self-conscious about these couple of spots on the skin here, right? So what we'll do is we'll crank this up to six or seven layers. We will activate this and we'll jump into one of these and we will auto levels and whoa now I need a trip to the dermatologist okay let's start with the fine details not seeing anything there bringing it up bringing it up now I can see these two dots so what I'm going to do is I'm going to control click on circles circle can be much much smaller than that so just shrink that down it might actually shrink the feather as well click and drag click and drag now you notice that on those two strokes I dragged out to the nine o'clock position from the source and this is what I really love about working with multiple scales so now I can come up to the next layer and I can do the same thing, but I don't have to drag to the same source. I might drag down to the six o'clock position. And so what that means is that for this next level of detail, I'm actually cloning from a different part of the skin texture. And over the course of doing all of these different layers, these different levels of detail, I can drag this time out to the three o'clock position, like so. Then we'll go up to the next layer and we're actually at a point now where I probably only need to do the, that first splotch. The second one's pretty much disappeared. Now we jump back to the original image and look at that. That is phenomenal. We've kept all of the skin texture, but we've removed those two marks. Now, let's say I wanted to attack this little red mark here, just where the shadow starts on the side of my face. Again, we'll jump back down to, yep, I can just see it there. And for this, I might actually go with a path, like a brush. And just gonna go little one there like that. And that's 
gone way off out there. I don't know why it decided to go all the way out there, but we'll just drag that in and we'll zoom back in. And I've kind of missed the mark there, so I'm just going to drag that across. And now I can jump up to my next layer. And for this one, I'm actually just going to go back to using a circle. Just drag that down to there. Again, you see that I'm moving in different directions on each layer that I edit. Just drag that up. And we'll move across here. Yep, there's still a little bit there, that red splotch. Just drag that out to there. And by that stage, we're clear. Come back and look at that. That is amazing. If I just deactivate the module and reactivate, that is sensational stuff. That really is amazing. And, you know, we can just keep on going, retouching till the cows come home. Let's say I didn't like this red splotchiness on the skin up here. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Bruce, I don't want to have to retouch five different layers for every spot that I encounter on a model's skin. Absolutely. I understand that. And to a large degree, you probably don't need to use this all of the time. Let's reset the module and let's just work on the original layer. So we zoom in, we grab a small brush, small circle, left click and drag, and I should have control clicked on that so I could just keep on painting. And this is just doing an amazing job, not quite so awesome there. And that's because that splotch is in shadow and I dragged out onto an area of skin that's not really in shadow. So I'll just right click, I'll get rid of that one. And what I will do for a second attempt is to go parallel with the shadow line. And that will probably do a better job. Let's click away, yeah, it did. So as you can see, you don't need to work in the wavelet domain all of the time. But sometimes you'll find that what you're trying to edit just won't work by working on the original image layer. And in instances like that, that's when you want to crank up the number of scales and look at the different levels of detail and see whether or not you can get better results by working on just one or two layers of detail rather than working on all of the pixel data in the image. Now, everything we've done so far has been using the healing tool algorithm. But as I said, there is also the cloning tool, which is sort of the dumb mode that the spot removal module used. So we can click on the cloning tool and let's say we're gonna try this red splotchiness up here on my forehead. So we'll go with the path tool and we'll click around like so, right click. For some reason, Darktable really likes that backdrop. Yeah, I don't think I want a hole in my head like that. So we bring that over, zoom back in, and click away. And yes, it's got rid of the red splotchiness, but it's not as subtle as the healing mode. If we look carefully, we can see that this is a copy and paste job from up here. And sometimes a keen-eyed viewer will pick when simple cloning has taken place. Now, there are times when cloning is acceptable. You know, you might have taken a photograph of, you know, say some green grass on a landscape and there might have just been some patches of dirt within that grass. And sometimes cloning the grass is actually the the thing that you want to do you you just you don't want to blend with the the dirt texture that was there you just want to take these nice green grassy bits and you want to copy them to the patch of dirt so there are times when the cloning approach is the appropriate thing to do but for a lot of skin retouching stuff you are going to want to be in this healing mode instead of cloning mode and thankfully by default the retouch module defaults to the healing mode
the blur mode is there for times when whatever it is that you're trying to clean up doesn't have an appropriate source anywhere else in the image. In other words, the destination is rather unique and you can't really clone from anywhere else or heal from anywhere else in the image. So the blur tool is there. Uh, let's just pick another area of my face. Let's say this little dark splotchy stuff down here. Maybe we needed to do something there and we couldn't find another part of the image to heal from or to clone from. So we go with the blur algorithm and we'll go with a brush, uh, sorry, a circle and we'll just go boom like that and what it's done is applied a subtle blur just to that area. Now again, at this point, we are only working on the original image. We're not working at the wavelet level. So let's try working on this area using the blur tool, but in the wavelet domain. So we'll just split this up into five layers or thereabouts. We'll activate our wavelet display mode. We will auto levels so that we can see some detail here. This is the area we're trying to fix. Let's have a look at it in finer detail. Yep, not much point going right down to there. I think here should be a decent place to start. We're still in blur mode and we'll go with our circle and we'll click on that spot and that will simply apply some blur just at this level of detail, this third of the five levels. So in other words, we're right in the middle of our detail levels. And we can jump back to the original image to see exactly what that did. And we can see it's applied a little bit of blur, but it hasn't completely removed that dark splotch. So we could go to the next layer and we could try doing the same thing. And then we jump back and check our original image. And to me, it's looking a little bit obvious, but if you were looking from right out here, it probably would be a little harder to tell and it might actually be acceptable. Okay, I think you've had enough of looking at that face. Let's try the other face that you've been looking at for the last 15 minutes, because I know you want me to go there. This is Desiree. We shot this in a studio in Sydney, oh, way too many years ago. And again, this is a, a great example of how editing in the wavelet domain can really do a nice job of skin textures. So Desiree has this little mole on her chin, jaw, jawline, I guess. Let's say we wanted to get rid of that. Let's say she was conscious of that and she didn't want it there. So what we could do is activate a few layers here and we might jump in at this level, auto levels, not much detail in the very fine, come up a level, not seeing anything there, come up to the next level, we're just starting to see the beginning of that mole there. So we'll just go with a circle, make it a little bit larger and we're just going to drag off in one direction, come up a layer. I'm just going to control click on that circle so I can keep on using it and we'll drag downwards and then on the next layer, make that a little bit bigger, just going to drag out this way and on our coarsest of details, just going to drag up like that and then we come back to our original and look at that that is sensational that is really sensational stuff it's kept all of the texture in the skin as you would expect it to but it's removed the mole beautifully i just i i'm in awe of what this module does it is just gorgeous and like I said, by control clicking on the shape that you want to use, you can simply keep on working with the tool over and over again without having to keep on going back and clicking on the shape that you want. Now, like I said, you don't always need to work in the wavelet domain. You know, a lot of this stuff we could probably 
simply work at the full image level. You know, just tidy up these little blemishes like so. I mean, Desiree has a gorgeous face. It's not like we really have to do this sort of detail work on her because she looks fantastic already. But you get what I'm saying. It just does a beautiful job of cleaning up those little imperfections. But unlike some of the heavy-handed approaches you've probably seen elsewhere on YouTube, this actually retains all the texture of the skin and it doesn't leave you with that plastic look that just looks horrible this is gorgeous stuff i i actually don't even know if lightroom has got a tool that comes close to this yet it's been a long time since i looked at lightroom so i'm i'm thinking the dark table developers have done some really amazing stuff here i don't know who was personally responsible for the retouch module it might have been a collaborative effort but whoever is responsible i take my hat off to you you did a fantastic job. Okay, we haven't talked about merging scales. So let's reset this. The concept of merging scales is something that I'm probably never going to use myself because what it allows us to do is, let's say we created half a dozen layers. We came into one of these mid-range layers and we found the point at which we could just see some detail. Well, let's say we started at the coarse end, right? And let's say we applied a brush stroke. And so we make our brush a bit bigger and we click and we drag. Now, in this instance, I've dragged out towards the three o'clock position from my destination. The idea of merge scales is that we grab this top triangle, which is currently positioned across the top of our original image, and we drag it to any particular layer that we want to. However many layers we want to copy, because this is essentially what it comes down to, is copying the shape and the direction to the source from this layer, this coarse layer, to however many layers we want to include. And you can see that they all turn this sort of uh, greenish, brownish color once you move that top triangle away from the original image location. When that triangle is at the original image, we are essentially not merging layers or scales together. But once we drag it to the right, we're saying whatever shapes are here, we want them copied to these detail layers. Now, the reason I say I don't think I'll ever use it is because it's always cloning from the same or healing from the same source to the same destination. In other words, it's doing the same move on every layer. And what I love is that idea of being able to drag from different areas around the problem point so that we're not always using the same source for the destination pixels. Does that make sense? I hope it does. But anyway, that's how it works. It'll, it's basically saying whatever I did on this layer here, the most coarse layer, copy that to the next two wave layers below. And if we then go back to our original image, we've got healing, but we've still got just a little hint of the darkness that was there from that mole. All right. So if we were to come back here and bring that up another layer, it brings back just a little bit more of the mole. All right. So this is a very elegant way of fine tuning any skin retouching. So it doesn't have to be an all or nothing proposition. It can be, I want to clean it up just a little bit, but I don't want to remove it. I just want to reduce its impact within the image, you know, which is really nice. That is really clever stuff. Now, what I haven't yet covered is, I'm just going to reset this is these two little icons here, the scissors, which is 
cut shapes from the current scale and the little round circle which is paste. So the way this would work is if you have worked on you know half a dozen layers for example and we've clicked on one of these and we've auto highlights and we've gone yeah I'm gonna start with this little splotch here on the skin just gonna paint like so now what we can do rather than a merge scale function is we can simply cut this particular shape from this layer move to another layer and then paste so you can't copy and paste that's where you would use the merge scales function but this allows us to cut move to a new layer and then the round circle becomes a downward facing arrow to say paste and that has pasted that shape to this layer so if you created the shape on one layer and then had a change of heart in that yeah I got the the right shape the right source the right destination pixels but I just did it at the wrong level of detail you can simply cut the shape from one layer and paste it to another layer okay we're just going to reset this again and we're going to look at the fill tool now I will confess I've not spent a lot of time with the fill tool because I can't see what it's there to be used for according to the blog post it's there for when you're absolutely completely out of ideas but why you would ever fill with a color I don't know so we want to fill we're going to use a round circle our fill mode is either erase or color so we might go color we can use our eyedropper to select a color just do something like that and we would then use our circle to fill with that color and we can then tweak the brightness to try and blend as close as we possibly can with our source but as I said I can't imagine when you would be so desperate as to use this tool you will generally want to be using the healing or the cloning algorithm 99% of the time particularly if what you're retouching is skin Alright, I think that will do it for the retouch module. It's an amazing piece of code and like I said, I take my hat off to the developers because I think they've done a beautiful job with this and I can certainly see that I will never use the spot removal module ever again. And as I said in the new features video, I don't imagine that the spot removal module will ever get removed from Darktable simply because it would then break backward compatibility with images you've edited in the past so I imagine it's gonna have to stay in the app but I can see that the retouch module is going to be the module you use for any sort of healing and retouching from this point forward just on the subject of the last video episode 26 on the filmic module a couple of people weighed in with comments on the YouTube page, including none other than Aurelien Pierre himself. And he wanted to clarify that I, I made a thing of the preserve chrominance checkbox and how it absolutely oversaturated everything when you're using the filmic module. And I said, why would you ever use that? And as he pointed out, and somebody else pointed it out as well, the intent is that if you are going to use the preserve chrominance feature within the filmic module that you will use some other color module whether that be color balance or any one of the other tools that has a saturation control and he recommends setting the color saturation in another color module to anything from 65 to 85 percent and that will bring the saturation back into a usable range but preserve the chrominance of the original raw data which can sometimes be different to what our eyes perceive 
according to Aurelian. I'm not sure I completely understand that, but I'll take his word for it. He wrote the module. I'm sure he knows what he's talking about. I also had uh, a guy called Ian McNabb write to me via email to say he shoots with a Fuji DSLR, which has an X-Trans sensor. And apparently with an X-Trans sensor, when you go to the D-Mosaic module, there is no Amaze algorithm available. And apparently it's something to do with just X-Trans sensors. They created a different D-Mosaic module, the name of which I'm not even going to try to pronounce. I will remember to put it on screen in text for you, but any of you who are shooting with Fuji have probably already encountered this and are already familiar with it. So just be aware that you can't use the Amaze D-Mosaic algorithm if you are using a Fuji DSLR with an X-Trans sensor. All right, people, I think that will do it for this one. Uh, looking forward to your feedback and uh, talk to you soon.